Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and in this video, we're talking about my hard drive workflow for making and uploading and saving videos. This topic is what usually gets forgotten when we're getting started. We get excited about our cameras, our lenses, our lighting, uh, and then we forget we have to do something with all of this data. So in this video, I'm gonna break down my current system for backing up and working with all that footage on hard drives and enclosures. And believe it or not, it's a pretty affordable setup. Now, before I jump into the hard drives, the speeds, the RAID configurations, the enclosures, I want to break everything into three categories that I'm almost always using all this stuff with. Number one is current projects, stuff I'm currently editing, um, uploading, working with, right? And stuff I'm importing to. So that's the first category. The second is archive. So when I'm done with the footage and done with old projects, where do they go? And the third category is system and computer drive. So where does the OS land? Um, how is that being backed up? Those are the three categories I'm almost always dealing with. So let's start with my current projects or projects enclosure. Right next to my main editing machine, I have a small four bay Mediasonic enclosure. In that enclosure, I have four four terabyte drives configured in a RAID 5. I'm not gonna get into the different RAID configurations, maybe I'll do that in a different video, but there's lots of videos on YouTube that can explain that for you. I like the RAID 5 configuration because it's a good mix of speed and using multiple drives to get better performance, and redundancy so with the current setup i have one drive can fail and i won't lose any data at all that mediasonic enclosure is a usb3 non-raid enclosure so it won't create its own raid you have to do that with software but i love it because it's 99 dollars, which is pretty affordable it has usb3 which is plenty fast for me and i'm easily able to quickly import and edit my footage now i want to stop here and discuss software versus hardware raids both will get the job done both are legitimate raids they're just two different ways to go about it i'm going with software raids which the hardware isn't involved at all and software is going to be creating the raids for each of the drives each of the enclosures i'll be talking about in this video have a hardware RAID option and a no RAID option. The hardware RAID doesn't involve any software. You just put the drives in, set the RAID configuration with a switch, and you're done. These will cost you between $50 and $75 more than the non-hardware RAID options. I've really enjoyed using Soft RAID, which we'll talk about near the end, and it's a great piece of software that'll monitor each of the drives, gives you a lot of tools if you do a lot of RAID work. So that is the current project setup. I import stuff directly to that drive, I edit off of that drive, and that's where everything lives when it comes to current work. When I'm done with a project, I will transfer the footage from that setup to my server. And my server isn't some complex NAS, it's just another machine that I have set up with my network and I'm able to remote in and uh, copy files around if I need to. And the idea is I wanna keep all my projects so I can always go back and get footage from them without having to rip it off of YouTube, which is always a huge pain. Um, so for that setup, things are a little different. I have two massive eight bay enclosures from the same company, Mediasonic. Those enclosures are also very affordable. I believe they're around 270 bucks each, but now we have double the amount of bays. Again, these are not RAID drives or enclosures. They uh, just take a bunch of drives and then you can use software to create your own RAIDs. So I've got two enclosures. One is the server itself. It has eight four terabyte drives in it configured in a RAID 5, and I'll list how many terabytes that is. I think it's 28 or so, um, which is a lot of space, and it's gonna be totally fine for YouTubers like us who are working with 4K footage or 1080. That is where all my old projects go. It's where I securely have all my documents for the business and anything that's gonna take up a lot of space. I even have a Plex server on there. So everything's on that in a RAID 5. In the second drive that's a matching 8-bay, I have just a bunch of random hard drives that I've collected over the years and I threw them all in there and configured it into a JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of disks. So it just looks like on my computer, one big fat hard drive. 
archive. And that backs up the server. And the beauty with this server archive setup is in the main 8-bay, I've got all of my stuff on a RAID 5. So one of those drives can fail and I won't lose any data. At the same time, every single day, that is backing up to the server backup. So even if the first enclosure completely explodes, at worst, I've lost a day of stuff on my backup server and I'm good to go. So that's category one and two, current work and archived work. What about our computer setups? I have two machines in the studio. One is my main editing machine. The second runs the server and can totally be another edit bay setup. Um, for those, I have internal SSDs to run the OS, and then inside each computer, I have an additional two hard drives. One will be dedicated to Time Machine, so using Apple's built-in backup system, and the other uses Carbon Copy Cloner to back everything up once a day or every other day. This way, if my main hard drive completely fails, I have a cloned backup, which is bit for bit exactly the same as my OS system. And I also have the time machine set up. So that is a overview of everything. You'll see a theme and that is security and backups. Um, in addition to everything I talked about, I have a Backblaze account, which is $5 per computer. And what I love about Backblaze is it's unlimited upload storage. And um, for that $5 per computer, it'll back up not only the computer, but everything that's attached to it. So for $10, everything in this entire studio is backed up to the cloud. So if I lose everything here, I can call up Backblaze and get a couple drives shipped to me with all my stuff. Now this setup is probably a little overkill for a lot of people. Since I'm doing two videos a week and generating a lot of storage and footage, I need to have this kind of setup. If you're doing a ton of production, you need to think about this as well and um, just gauge it and spend as much as you need to to get that security depending on the footage that you're filming. So if you're just filming little family things here and there, a smaller setup with a cloud backup storage will probably be just fine. But if you're working with big corporations creating projects, you really need to back that up because if everything falls apart, that's on you and you've wasted their time and a ton of capital. And in closing, there's a couple things you wanna think about if you're specking your own system out. First is the enclosure type and the performance of the connections or IO. So I'm using USB 3, works great for 4K. If I ever move to 8K, I might need to rethink that. And it's just me and maybe an assistant editor. So I don't need Thunderbolt for wicked transfer speeds and all of that. The second thing is the drive speed and capacity and the type of drive. So you'll wanna look at the rotations per minute if you're going with a traditional spinning disk, or if you wanna think about SSD, that's a little different. Um, you also wanna look at the type of drive. Is it an enterprise drive where it's designed to run 24 seven, 365, or is it a desktop drive? Um, I have found using desktop drives seems to work pretty good. My server system is running 24 seven all the time, and uh, the drives I've had in there are desktop, so they're not designed necessarily to be doing that, but they've worked great for a couple years, and you save a lot of money by doing that. So you'll have to think about all of that and be ready to fork out more cash if one of those drives fails. When it comes to software to make all of this work, I use Soft RAID to create the RAID although some RAID configurations you can do within OS X without that. And for the actual backups, I use Carbon Copy Cloner, which is a great piece of software. It's free, and you can say, back this up to this once a day, five times a day, once a week, whatever you want in the middle of the night, it doesn't matter. That's a great piece of software and it makes it really easy to back things up. So that is my current setup when it comes to hard drives and workflow with them. Let me know if you have any questions and if you'd like to see more videos like this, I have a couple ideas for maybe some budget setups for people getting started. So you can hit me up in the comments with any questions on that stuff. Otherwise, you can watch fresh videos here at DSLR Video Shooter every single week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.